years when the oceans drank Atlantis and the rise of the sons of Arius, there was an age undreamed of when shining kingdoms lay spread across the world. Hither came Conan, the Cimmerian, sword in hand. It is I, his chronicler, who knows well his saga. Now, let me tell you of the days of high adventure. Note the red painted curly hair and the void eyes like the Greek statues. And most of these statues were painted. You can see remnants of it. Reddish blonde hair here. Quite a few of these statues conspicuously look like the Statue of Liberty. Definitely that aquiline nose. Some delicate art that really has a realism to it that's very nice. In fact, this was the first people that showed poses and realism that looked very similar. And of course, the Greeks shortly after this start showing a lot of statuary that are not just like the Egyptians where they're standing in one pose, and perhaps making a first step, but in extreme poses. Again, the goddess Tanit.
They too had sarcophaguses. Or sarcophagi. Though they weren't made out of solid gold. They're very simple. Venetian cap. And this looks very much like the Lady of Elche. Somewhat Egyptian motifs thrown in. Yet carotid columns like this that were definitely some type of Greek and Minoan type thing also. There's an Egyptian style hairdo on a man with a full beard. Last Phoenician king of Sidon. You can see the colorized animals here, and even some of the women who are in the delicate poses are shown with still some color left. The one third from the left is yellowish. So is the man behind the cart. And here are four horse carts. With that yellow dress. Still holding a remnant of the color. The one on the left looking very bluish purple. You can see this looks extremely Greek, yet this is a Phoenician. So we'll get some Nimrod ivories. Great King Nimrod. Ancient tradesmen, lords of the sea. Look at this strange depiction here. Very Egyptian looking, yet you can tell uh, he has golden blonde locks, long hair of them. And if you look, it's just a piece of the frag, it's just a fragment of it. But there's a lion's paw here with his claws. And another lion's paw going around his waist here with his claws. He's indeed taking on this lion, probably going up with his hand into his throat in that common pose that you see. Showing a lot of connections. And there's a lot of Egyptian motifs all through this. Somewhat a blending of styles from Sumerian looking things through Akkadian looking styles, but then you can see the actual wigs and things they're wearing and how that looks very strange and almost Egyptian plaited braids. And you can see the pan pipes, the dual pipes that he's playing. And the symbolism up here of the water. The goddess Tanit. Look how Egyptian some of these things are. They even have Sphinx. Very anthropomorphic creatures. Inlays of Isis. 
Your own goddess Tanit. Look at the long locks on this man. Or is this a woman? Look at the Egyptian motif here, and you can see that it's a wig. Indeed, they, the Phoenicians really owned a large portion of the entire Mediterranean at one good time here. Indeed, they flourished all the way through till after the Punic Wars, known as the Sea People. It's people that had purple in their colors, reddish hair, and foan means reddish. These people that only had water routes, but they had trade routes everywhere, and indeed even conquered elephants and took them on their journeys. The great stories of Hannibal and the Carthaginians and the great Punic Wars they had. You have a Carthaginian priest, very much an Isis form. Here we have Hannibal himself. Coins from that time, and this is Elissa, the essence of the word Melissa and Lisa and these Phoenicians with their purple and gold this symbol of royalty that spread out from there that still to this day is definitely a sign of royalty the Lady of Elche actually found in Spain itself but showing connections look at the hair on this it's blonde and the flesh colored skin of these Phoenicians these great merchants of old that brought civilization. Look at the eight spoked wheels of the Aryans, of the Hindus, and the symbolism of Aries with the ram's horns. There's a man that has a triple pierced ear. Again, Tanit. which I still say looks extremely like Statue of Liberty. And again, many of these were painted, some of them showing blue eyes like this. Depictions all the way from something very odd like this to even depictions you can tell that the Zeus and Greek god forms come from, from things that look very Indian and Mayan of these ancient merchants. You know, merchants broken down, myrrh is the ocean into chant. And you know songs and sea shanties and the, the chants of people that are rowing. It's perhaps the essence of the word myrrh chant. Look at the Severan dynasty here. And you can see the lineage and the way it runs through. These are your Phoenicians. Now, Lucius. Severus. Anybody that's familiar with the Harry Potter stories know about Severus and the Half-Blood Prince.
So even some of the Roman rulers, after all this was said and done, were indeed Phoenicians. Here is a depiction of Septimus Severus himself. And here is Lady Julia Domna. Caracalla. Geta. Ella Gabalus himself. So these are your Phoenicians, even through Alexander Severus. Like, share, and subscribe.